Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your conservative member of parliament for the majestic riding of Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Over the weekend, I was canvassing the neighborhoods in different parts of the riding. The question was whether or not residents are in favor of the carbon tax. Surprisingly, a few were in favor. Maybe it was to justify the Teslas in their driveways. Most people think the carbon tax cleans the particulate matter that spews out of diesel exhausts. That's not what's being taxed. What is being taxed is carbon dioxide, a clear, colorless gas. It's what's in the canister that puts fizz in your soda stream. It's what they pump into greenhouses to enhance plant growth. It's what you exhale after every breath you take. Canada's radical Marxist government wants to tax every breath you take. The extremists running the regime are already going after livestock for breathing. They've already put costly measures into place for the methane cattle that they emit. That drives up the cost of food. More money being spent drives up inflation. The Bank of Canada then raises interest rates. Then mortgages cost more. Some people lose their homes and have to live under tarps. They get depressed. The government has a solution for that too. They just call in the maid to clean up. Justin had another temper tantrum last week. He was pulverized by his usually fawning press with a report of $2 million for the price on six days of a trip to the Indo-Pacific. Uh, that trip he treated his son and 51 of his closest friends to last September. The in-flight catering was almost $200,000 and this was also on the heels of learning last week that Trudeau has known about the foreign interference during the 2019 and 2021 elections, but did not tell the MPs whose families were being threatened over it. The communists who run China are helping Trudeau, so he didn't want to ruin a good thing. Then we had more revelations from the ad scam committee. That was the 60, what was the $60 million price tag for? Who is getting access to all the personal medical information travelers had to relinquish to go on via the app? Or is this the who or the WHO, Canada partnered with the Dutch government to develop a digital ID. The fact that Canadians aren't buying Trudeau's claims over the carbon tax fixing the weather probably has something to do with the great distraction also. Americans aren't buying it either. The U.S. Uh, last week announced the cancellation of the electric vehicle mandates there. Premier Ford is stalling construction of a new battery plant. Trudeau is in panic mode. The Davos man, Mark Carney, former Bank of Canada governor and governor of the Bank of England, has been tapped to succeed Trudeau. Carney be, may be more careful with spending, but he ranks even higher in the Church of Climate Socialism. Desperate to cling on to powder, power, Trudeau has only one solution, spending all your money. Over the last three weeks, he has been spending on a binge. The NDP Liberal Socialist Coalition has already announced over $25 billion in new spending. A senior economist at Scotiabank warned that all this new federal government spending would prevent the Bank of Canada from lowering interest rates this quarter. They were right. Last Wednesday, the Bank of Canada 
announced it was keeping the interest rate at 5%. But the bank's announcement may be worse than the legacy media will tell you. Here's what the bank said and what it means. Quote, in Canada, economic growth stalled in the second half of last year and the economy moved into excess supply. End quote. Now, normally a slowing economy would mean the bank should start cutting interest rates. Quote, employment has been growing more slowly than the working age population and the unemployment rate has risen gradually. End quote. Normally, growing unemployment would mean the bank should start cutting interest rates. So if unemployment is rising and economic growth is slowing, why is the bank holding the line on interest rates? Quote, spending by governments has also increased, end quote. And that's the answer. While the Bank of Canada has been putting its foot on the brakes, Justin Trudeau has gunned the gas pedal. Justin Trudeau just can't be trusted behind the wheel of our economy. He's a spending addict. He just can't stop himself from spending your money. Unless that money is for national defense. As part of the liberal pre-but pre-budget spending spree, the Liberals pretended to increase defense spending. The Liberals said they were increasing defense spending and much of the legacy media fell for it, but it's all a shell game. The housing crisis impacts all Canadians, but it is especially difficult for new recruits and families in the Canadian Armed Forces. They are moved from base to base, sometimes even being forced to buy and sell a new home in the same year. The stock of livable houses on bases and nearby has shrunk, and the department is aware of all this. So, as part of their fake defense spending announcement, they promise more money for housing for the women and men who are in uniform. Trudeau got up and said with a straight face that the government would spend $295 million for military housing over the next 20 years. Now, $295 million sounds like a lot, but when you divide it by 20 over 20 years, uh, that only comes out to just under $15 million a year. But $15 million a year would still help, except the Liberals didn't divide it evenly over 20 years. They backloaded it to make the number sound bigger. So how much are the Liberals planning to spend this year on military housing? <clears throat> Zero. Nothing. Not a single dollar. How much do they plan to spend next year? Zero. But don't worry. The military still has around 60,000 members. So $100 million to house 5,000 asylum seekers and $1 million for 60,000 serving men and women. In total, the Liberals plan to spend just $7 million on housing by 2029. Excuse me. This is shameful behavior by the Liberals. They claim they're increasing funding, but they announced a plan to cut $2 billion over the next three years. Now, they claim they'll be spending $8 billion more, but they backload all the spending, so the result will be a budget cut this year. And the legacy media went with the headlines that claimed the NDP Liberal Socialist Coalition were increasing defense spending. Now, <clears throat> just like the crooks keep two sets of books, I thought there must be another document with actual substance outlining the way the federal government will keep Canadians safe. But <clears throat> aside from a, a few ambiguous references to equipment, that's been due for replacement for over a decade or more, it's silent. 
I would encourage each of you to scan through it yourself. It's fluffy prose, has all the usual virtue signaling you'd expect in a speech from the throne. There's a hand wringing over the Arctic, but in nine years, he hasn't put a single security measure into place. He just posts the Photoshop picture of the polar bear fishing off an ice floe, then hikes the carbon tax to save the polar bear. The pictures in the defense policy update don't even have captions, so we don't know if the equipment shown is even ours. There has to be a version other than what's posted on the internet. The Library of Parliament will cough up a hard copy. And if you look real closely at budget documents printed and bound versus what's slapped online, sometimes there are discrepancies. So while Justin Trudeau likes to stomp on provincial jurisdiction chasing votes, he totally rejects the responsibilities his NDP Liberal Coalition has to keep our residents safe. He poisons every provincial portfolio he touches. His mythical $10 a day daycare has resulted in fewer places to have children care for than more. Eventually, the feds will have to take over daycare completely because there won't be a business case for private operators to make it worth their while. Now, who can forget the billion dollar photo op where he's packing children's lunches because some parents can no longer afford to feed the children themselves. The federal government is responsible for our soldiers' well-being, and that includes their families. The shortage of childcare on some military bases is at a crisis with the refusal of, by Justin to ensure childcare workers for military children can make a living wage. Childcare workers include military spouses. When the combined incomes of both parents are not enough to keep roofs over their heads and food on the table, they leave the military. Shelter for new recruits is a responsibility, yet Trudeau insists on tampering with the housing crisis he caused with his tweet inviting mass migration into Canada. Every billion dollars he borrows and dumps into the economy, taxpayers have to fork out more of their paychecks. Spending more money than government takes in from your income taxes means he has to raise taxes. And we already know he's raising taxes. The paid off media says so. <clears throat> Ever since the defense policy update was announced, they've been conditioning us to the notion that this year's budget will have tax increases. He implies money will go to the military, but he's cutting a billion dollars from defense now. It's the usual slate of hand. More, aboard, more borrowed money dumped into the economy after the added cost of flowing through the fingers of bureaucrats mean interest rates will go up. Higher interest rates mean higher mortgage payments and <clears throat> fewer people can ever dream of owning their own home. Canada becomes weaker financially and the ability for Canada to defend our sovereignty weakens. Trudeau's disdain for defense is not limited to our troops. Again, he makes announcements about equipment for Ukraine, but it's never shipped there. In fact, he brags about some vital equipment that hasn't even been ordered yet. It's as though he wants Ukraine to be swallowed up by communism. And I know there are some strong opinions about your tax dollars going to Ukraine, but if that conflict fills, spills further into Europe, it is your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren who are going to be sent to the Russian front. The loss of human life will hit every Canadian in some way. The financial costs will make a life unaffordable for millions more Canadians. The first day of World War II amounted to 1% of Europe's annual GDP. 
it's time to get rid of this prime minister who is so unconcerned about keeping Canadians safe, he doesn't even read his own security briefings. Canadians need an election. Live from Ottawa, this is Cheryl Gallant.